everyone, and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons. Today, I'm very excited to help you take your lead guitar playing to the next level. As I show you how to navigate across your fretboard using five different positions of the pentatonic scale and also the high octave. Now this is going to be using a concept that some people call the cage system, the cage theory, or cage concept. Basically what this is, is playing any one of your chords, for example, an E major, in five different ways, using a C shape, an A shape, a G shape, that one's not that easy, uh, an E shape, of course, and also your D shape. Now around each of these different types of chord shapes, we have our scales, whether it be a major, a minor, a pentatonic, you name it. Those chord shapes are surrounded by different scale patterns, and this is how we can use these uh, shapes to navigate the fretboard um, with a little bit more confidence. Now, real quick before we jump into our lesson, I want to introduce you to a great new product that I just became aware of. It's called Lizard Spit. And this morning when I realized I wanted to teach this uh, lesson, I wanted to break out my Fender Cyclone, but the strings were rusty and the fretboard was covered in dirt and grime. So all I needed to do was take a little bit of Lizard Spit, put it on the fretboard, let it sit for a few moments, and everything wipes off nice and clean. You can go to my Instagram to see the before and after pictures. Now Lizard Spit, they have the fretboard conditioner and also something great for cleaning up the body and also their own signature cloths. I'm gonna put a link in the description. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the product. Now let's get started with our lesson. Okay, a close look at the fretboard, and we're gonna begin actually learning how the pentatonic scale works. Basically what it is, is a five tone scale, a dumbed down minor scale to be exact. And it runs on a very specific set of intervals. It begins with a minor or a flat third. In the key of E, that would be an E, going up to a G. That's called a flat third because if we were to compare it with our major scale, which everything is in reference to, it would be the third note of the major scale, whole, whole, there it is, that third note of the scale, flat it. And that's why we're gonna call it the flat third. Okay, so the open E, going up to the G. Next, we have a whole step to create our pentatonic scale. So, flat third, whole step, whole step, a flat third again. That's that whole step and a half step. And then finally, one more whole step up to the 12th fret brings us to the octave. Let's play our entire pentatonic scale, just one octave, across one string. The pentatonic scale on the E string there. And you can do that starting on any E note. Okay, now that we understand the intervals within the pentatonic scale, that minor third, the whole, the whole, the flat a third again, and then the whole step finishing the octave, we can learn how to play that exact same scale here in the open position. This is the first position that I'm going to show you, and it's one of the most popular positions to play in solo in. So we have open E, third fret, open A, second fret. Open D, second fret. Open G, second fret. Open B, third fret. Open E, third fret. O three, O two, O two, O two, O three, O three. And occasionally you'll see players adding in notes from what we call the blues scale. That's when we throw in this uh, B flat note here. And here. And that makes it much more bluesy. So if you want to do that, it'd be O3, O12, O2, O23, O3, O3. So that position encircles the chord that we have, E minor, or you could look at it like E major or E7. Remember, minor licks work over top of major and minor chord progressions. So I can give you a couple of licks that work using this scale and this position. Okay, getting started with the first lick in this position, it's gonna sound like this. Using the high octave, at full speed, it'll sound like this. Great, fast, short little lick to fill in your solos. All 
right, all I'm doing there, just without all the kind of flowery stuff, third fret high E string, open E string, the third fret B string, flattening the finger to the third fret high E string again, and then the open string ringing out. This is a great lick to get a little bit of a rake on. You can cover up the strings and go, cover up the strings, just dead notes. And then make sure you push down on the high E string right as you're finishing that little rake. So we have dead, 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 and then striking the string, squeezing right as I get to the high E string. And that's how we're gonna get that nice little raking sound. Sounds much better when the pick is over uh, by the pickups. For your first lick there. Now for extra expression, try bending the note as you hit it. Okay, let's get another lick in this position down using our blues scale notes. This is gonna be in the lower octave. Sounds like this. One more time. Kind of similar to Steve Ray Vaughan. All right, so all I'm doing there, hammering onto the second fret D string, open string D, second fret A string, hammer and a pull off the first finger, or sorry, first fret of the A string. So I hammered on, and then peeled my finger off to make the open string sound. So far we have. Don't forget that hammer on at the beginning. third fret of the low E string, the open A string, the third fret of the low E string, and then the open E string finishes it up. For two great licks in your open position surrounding that E minor or major shape. Okay, the next position of our pentatonic scale encircles the version of our E minor and major chords that's based off of the shape D, D minor, D major, up one whole step. So if I have my D minor chord, for example, I can see that a lot of these notes exist inside the little shape that a lot of guitar players call the pentatonic extension. They're jamming in this little box over here and then they kind of slide up. Well, this has a lot more going on with it than just these three strings. Here's the full position of that pentatonic scale. Starting with the open E string, third fret, low E, fifth fret, second fret of the A string, stretching up a minor third there. There's the pinky fifth fret. Same thing on the D string. So far we have. Oh, three, five, two, five, two, five. Changing things up on the G string here, just going two to four. And then here's where we start getting into that little extension, that familiar extension position. Three, five, three, five. Okay, now that you have this second position of the pentatonic scale in the key of E down, remember this is encircling the D shaped version of our E minor chord, or E major chord. I'm gonna give you a couple of licks that you can use in this box as well. Uh, this one's gonna sound like this. One more time at full speed. A little snap there at the end. All I'm doing is sliding up, yeah, usually from the third or second fret up to the fourth fret G string. The third fret of the B string, third fret of the high E string. And then I'm gonna hammer from three to five on the B string. And I'm gonna snap the string by plucking it with my, between my, actually my pick and my pointer finger. One more time, nice and slow. And mixing in the flesh against the string, not just using my pick, but pinching the strings. 
it's going to give it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more energy. This is a great lick for setting up. Transitions back into the open position. Okay, let's get one more lick using the lower octave of this position of the pentatonic scale. Sounds like this. One more time. Okay, here we are taking the D note, fifth fret A string, bending and returning before doing a pull off to the third fret. Then I'm gonna go to the A note, fifth fret E string. Then I'm gonna play three five on the A string. 2-2 two, two on the D and J, and then my pinky's gonna go up to the uh, fifth fret of the D string, or I'll slide up into that, slide in with my third finger, just like that. It can be from the second fret or the third fret. Okay, even a half step slide sounds fantastic. Okay, moving into our next position. This one is going to encircle the chord E major in the C position or C minor position. Again, it's gonna work over top of major and minor chord shapes. All right, this position sounds and looks like this. All right, so that was five seven on the E string, five seven on the A string. Same thing on the D string. Now, changing things up a little bit on the G. Fourth fret, seventh fret. Oftentimes done with the first and ring finger. Then we're gonna have five and eight on the B string. And then just a whole step to finish things up on the high E string. That's seven, or five to seven. Now that we understand this pentatonic position that surrounds the C version, I'm gonna show you a lick that kinda of has a little bit of a Jimmy Page feel due to the super bends. It's gonna be here in the high octave and it sounds like this. One, one more time real slow. All right, so basically what I have going on there is bending the seventh fret of the high E string. Then I'm gonna do a descend. Seven, six, hammer and a pull. Five, six, five. Then I'm going to the B string, eighth fret. Plucking that string, that fret, and then lifting real high with a super bend. So a super bend is any kind of bend that exceeds a half step or a full step. We're finishing this lick here on the fifth fret of the B string with some heavy vibrato. Okay, let's get one in the lower octave of this same position. It's gonna sound like this. One more time. And then real slow. Okay, so in this lick, I'm starting off on the seventh fret of the A string, my root. And then just walking right up the scale, my minor third and my whole step. Remember these intervals. Then once I get up to this note, the A note, I'm gonna do a hammer with the pinky, pull off, and then do a pull off down to the fifth fret of the D string. Then I'm going back to the seventh fret of the D string, back to the fifth fret of the D. So far we have. And then finally we'll have this part. 
So there I'm playing the seventh fret A string, up one string to the E string, my middle finger, making sure to copy these fingers. Then I'm on the fifth fret of the A string, and resolve on the root. For a great lick in our lower octave of our pentatonic scale position surrounding the C shape. Okay, moving on to our next position. This one is going to encircle the A minor shape in the key of E minor. Our root is here. Our lowest root is on the seventh fret of the A string. Doesn't mean that we can't go a little lower though in this position. Okay, so this position of the pentatonic scale in the key of E will sound like this. All right, basically what we have going on, seventh fret to 10th fret of the E string. Same thing on the A string. To the D string, I'm going seven to nine. Same thing on the G. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the B string, but remember the B string is tuned a little funny. It's tuned to a third rather than a fourth, uh, which means that we need to take this exact same idea, a whole step, but bring it up one fret. So on the B string, we're playing uh, eighth fret, 10th fret. Then finally, we're going to go 7th uh, fret, 10th fret on the high E string. You put all that together, we have. For your pentatonic position, over the A-shaped version of our E minor chord. Okay, getting started with a couple of possibilities that you can use in this position. One of my very favorite licks involves a little harmony here of a double stop using the seventh fret high E string and the eighth fret B string, a little bend like this. Great little lick there. So I have that seventh fret high E, eighth fret B string and I'm just bending up with the middle finger on the B string as the first finger, high E string 7th fret, remains exactly in place. Then I'm gonna do something similar that I did in the last lick. That great little fourth jump there. We're going um, G string, 9th fret, up one string to the D string. A little vibrato here on the 7th fret G string. And then finding my root on the 7th fret of the G string, I'm sorry, ninth fret of the G string, excuse me. So bend, 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 then that G string, ninth fret, ninth fret of the D string, seventh fret G, and then I'm there on the ninth fret of the G string to resolve. Sometimes I'll also take this little shape and bring it up a whole step. or add in a little shape here from the next position that we'll get to. So that's 12 and 10, 10 and nine, uh, eight and seven, and our little roundabout lick. Okay, now let's get one also for the lower octave here. We're gonna do something like this. Okay, so this lick right here, getting something in the lower octave. It's one of my favorite little licks to play. Uh, basically what we have going on, a hammer from seven to nine of the D string. Then on that same D string, we're gonna do a hammer and a pool. That's from seven to eight to seven. My pinky reaches to the 10th fret A string to the seventh fret D string. Back to the pinky note, 10th uh, fret A string. And then we have, all right, that was seven A, 10 E, and resolving on the root, the seventh fret of the A string. Okay, just two more positions of our E pentatonic scale to learn. This one, is encircling the G shape version of our E major chord. Not a very friendly bar chord shape, 
but the position for soloing is actually very, very good. Okay, so remember, holding on to that cage concept kind of idea. C, A, G, E, and D. These are the types of chords that are found on the guitar neck, and the scales, whether it be major, pentatonic, minor, you name it, it's gonna encircle those chord shapes across the neck. All right, so this version of the pentatonic scale in E is gonna sound like this. Okay, so, you do a whole step there on your E string. It can actually start here on the 10th fret of the E string, then find the root on the 12th fret. Then we're going to have a whole step here also. That's the uh, 10th fret A, 12th fret. Then we're going wide, 9th fret to 12th fret. Onto the G string with the same thing. Then on the uh, B string and high E string, we just have 10, 12. Getting started with a couple of licks in this position, we're going to start off with one that's got a real bluesy flavor. Sounds like this. One more time. Real slow. So I start this one off fretting two notes. The 10th fret of the B string and the high E string 12th fret. I'm gonna hit the, both of those notes at the same time as I hammer on with my middle finger up to the 11th fret of the B string. Getting a little bit of that blues scale and bob. Then I'm gonna do a hammer and a pull before reaching the G string 12th fret. Then I'm back to the 10th fret of the B string. So far we have. Then I'm to the 12th fret G string. 9th fret. Then the 12th fret D string. Then the 9th fret uh, G string for my root. Sounds great if we can get a little bend in there. Okay, getting into a lower octave lick in this position that surrounds our G shape of E major. Your lick is gonna sound like this. One more time, nice and slow. And one more time at full speed. Okay, I love this lick. This one's sliding up to the 12th fret. Then I've got the 10th fret A, uh, A string, 12th fret. And then right there, I'm gonna go 9-9 uh, nine, nine on the D and the G string. That's gonna be followed by a nice bend on the G string 12th fret. And then resolving on that same root, G string 9th fret. Okay, moving on to our sixth and final position of our pentatonic scale in the key of E. Congrats to everyone who's made it this far. Okay, this is the most popular version of our pentatonic scale, the one that's used most often. It's gonna look like this. Okay, most of you probably already know this, but we'll go through it. We have 12 to 15, 12 to 14, same thing on the D string, 12, 14. Same thing on the G string. Okay, then on the B string we have 12, 15. And the same thing on the high E string. And you can see why this is the most popular position, the easiest to navigate. Okay, so the final licks of today's lesson, we're gonna get started with one in the style of BB King, Thrill is Gone. Sounds like this. A short little phrase there. Very simple little line. We're gonna take our first finger and slide, doesn't really matter uh, where I slide from, up to the 12th fret B string, play the high E string 12th fret, 
Then I'm gonna take my ring finger and play the 15th fret. Might bend it just a hair. And keep it nice and short too. Before vibratoing the root on the 12th fret of the high E string. Okay, getting into the next lick. This one will use a little bit of the high octave and the low octave. It's gonna sound like this. It's your final lick for today's lesson. Great little filler lick, especially when the solo was really starting to heat up. And it uses a little double stop as well. So to do this lick, we're gonna hit the G and the B string, 12th fret at the same time. Bend it just a little bit. A little pull off on the D string, 14th to 12th. That's gonna take us to the 14th fret of the A string, back to the 12th fret of the D string. So far we have. And then finally, we'll land on the root. That's the 14th fret of the D string. Okay, congrats to everyone who's finished this lesson. You've just mapped out the entire pentatonic scale across the fretboard. You can jam in the open position. Get up into your extension. And you're no longer limited to just three strings. You can slide up into your C position. Your A position. Practicing your double stops. You've got your G position down. Getting up into your octave of the open E position. Where so many famous solos have taken place. All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on pentatonic boxes across the fretboard. I hope you got a lot out of it and that you enjoyed it. I got plenty more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe and please support at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.